use your mouse to look around. You are seeing this space battle from a turret attached to a small fighter craft. Most of the other ships in this battle are much larger and slower than yours, including frigates, cruisers, and other types. War is constant in our galaxy, with many factions and nations vying for territory and power. Large battles of this kind are common on the front lines, with many pilots participating on either side. Select the enemy vessel, then your mouse to steer your ship until the enemy is within the crosshairs in the center of your display. When the enemy is in the correct position indicated by a yellow targeting reticle, use the left mouse button to open fire. The next tutorials will begin with a brief recorded demonstration of each segment, after which you may try it for yourself. Use your keyboard and mouse to fly through each successive ring and dock with the space station. The W and S keys will adjust the speed of your ship, while your mouse will allow you to steer. Use the tab key to fly much faster in a straight line. The two circles below the center of the screen are your radar displays. The left circle displays what is in front of your ship, the right what is behind you. The next gate is shown on your radar as a green cross in a red circle. The red circle means the gate is selected as your navigation target. When your target is off screen, a blue arrow will appear and point which way to turn. Docking bays appear as an S on your radar and have animated arrows moving inward. Slowly fly into the docking bay and you will dock on them. Congratulations, pilot. If you're ready to explore the galaxy, then select Play Online. Otherwise, you can continue to refine your flying skills through the offline free play mode. Welcome, pilot. To help you get started exploring the galaxy, we'll begin by setting up your first ship. 
Select the Ship tab in the upper middle of your display. Here you can purchase ships and equipment upgrades, the selection is very limited at this training station, you'll find much greater variety as you travel. Since we want to buy a new ship, select Buy on the right side. On the left you see your new EC-89 combat transport vessel. Choose the color of your vessel from the palette below. You can also select and drag the ship to view different angles. Choose Purchase selected on the lower left when you are ready to proceed. Excellent! Now your ship needs some additional equipment to be ready for flight. From here you may purchase small port add-ons. More advanced ships have different port types, and other stations offer a variety of equipment. For now, choose the training blaster, then use the purchase cell. Lastly, you need a power cell to store energy used by your ship's weapons and jump system. Choose the free power cell and then use the purchase selected button. Congratulations, pilot, you've purchased your first ship. Now that you're ready to start flying, we'll set you up with your first mission as well. Continue by selecting your PD. This is your personal data assistant, which travels with you and holds all the information about your ship, missions and surroundings. Select the available mission, then choose the info button in the lower left corner. Here you see the selected mission, which you may accept or decline. You must pass these first few missions in order to leave the training sector. As you progress, many more missions will become available. At this point, we recommend you accept the Welcome mission and board. proceed. Recruit. Good luck, we are The Itani Nation have a mighty history to uphold as one of the most skilled groups of pilots in the galaxy. Sure, our enemies the Circo are best known for their military might, but where they rely on brute force, we dance among the stars as the lethal artists of space combat. We're going to start out with launching your ship from the station. When you launch, your ship will drift out of the launch bay at a slow speed. Let yourself float away from the station, don't try to fly yet, and then follow the on-screen instructions. If you miss any instructions, you can press the M key to see your mission log. Go ahead and launch now, by pressing the launch button in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. This is your mission log, where you can see relevant mission updates and the current set of mission objectives. The bouncing M on your ship flight display indicates a new update. You can both open and close this display with M, and you can always use escape to return to the flight display. You have launched your ship and should now be sitting in space a short distance from the station. Your ship's flight display, heads-up display, or HUD from now on, includes several important items. The bar immediately to the left of your central crosshairs indicates your ship's speed, and should show 0 meters per second directly beneath it, or 0 meters per second. The two large circles on the lower left and right are your radar dis- You can use the mouse to look in different directions. As you turn, the ship will also turn to match your view, represented by the moving circle with cro- Now you're ready to try some flying. There are two flight control methods, one that behaves like a terrestrial aircraft, and one that acts more like a true spaceship. You are currently using the first one, flying like an airplane. A later tutorial will cover the second control method. If you press W you will increase your throttle and forward speed. You can then steer with the mouse. S will decrease your throttle and eventually bring you to a stop. The spacebar will temporarily stop you, but your throttle setting will remain the same. As soon as you release the spacebar, you will begin moving again, unless you decrease the throttle. The station's docking bays are indicated with S icons on your radar. Green blips indicate friendly pilots. Red blips are enemies. Gray blips are rocks or other obstructions. Try flying towards some of the smaller nearby asteroids. You may see some Warun Collector training drones flying about, which will display as red enemy blips on your radar. Don't be afraid, their weapons cannot hurt you, even if they shoot you. Running into an asteroid can damage your ship, but not very much as long as you're flying slowly. Some advanced controls you can optionally try, the A and D keys allow you to slide your ship laterally, side to side. A and D are left and right respectively based on whatever direction you are facing. 
R and F will do the same thing, but up and down. You can also press F1, while flying, to get a list of keys. Now we're going to have you try some basic combat. When you're on the HUD display, flying your ship, you can press the X key to select nearest enemy. The selected target will then be displayed on your radar, and indicated on your HUD if it is in front of you. If the enemy is not in front of you, a new arrow will appear near your central reticule, showing you which direction to turn to find the selected enemy. When you have selected an enemy, try flying over near it, and shooting it by pressing the left mouse button. Successful hits are indicated with a beep sound, and repeated hits should result in the enemy's health bar shrinking. Aim for the small, moving red reticule, and shoot when it turns yellow, this is the lead-off target, to help you predict moving enemies. Go try and target, locate and shoot some more rune collectors now, then return here to continue when ready. You don't have to destroy any, simply get an idea of what's involved. To complete this mission, we're going to have you dock with the station. Find the S icons on your radar, six of them bunched together, and turn until they're in the center of the left circle, directly ahead of you. Then fly forward until you reach the station. As you get closer, you will see there are two types of bays on the station. Docking bays have blinking blue animated arrows that point into them. Launch bays have blue force fields that prevent entry. Launch bays are only for ships that are launching, and docking bays are only for docking. The S icons on your radar are actually the docking bays themselves. When you find a docking bay, fly into it and press the activate key, which is usually enter, or return on a Mac. Any docking bay will do, it doesn't matter which. We'll wait for you to dock to continue the mission. Welcome back, Infernox. You've successfully completed your first mission. Hopefully now you feel a little more informed about how to fly, dock, and other basic concepts. All the text from this mission, and future missions, will be kept for reference in the mission logs area of your PDA. Once you complete this mission, a more advanced training mission will become available, teaching you more about basic survival. These missions only take a few minutes each, but will give you a real jump start in piloting. You will also receive special bonus experience and funds for completing the training missions. To complete this mission, Welcome back, Infernox. Let's start out by launching from the station, big button, lower right corner. We'll pick things up once you've launched. Remember to press the M key to bring up your mission panel when you see an update appear. Excellent. For starters, we'd like you to experiment with Turbo, which is engaged with the tab key. Turbo will allow you... Good. Hopefully you've seen that it gives you a great boost of speed. However, you may have also noticed that it depleted the little bar on the right hand side of your crosshairs. This is your energy display. Your ship's engine continually generates energy, and it is stored in a power cell. Low power engine used with the normal directional key. Now let's briefly discuss combat flight models. As we mentioned before, there are two modes of flight, one that behaves like an airplane, and one that works on true physics. The airplane model is called flight assist, and actually is created by your ship's computer doing the calculations to make piloting a little simpler and easier. However, all pilots should at least be aware of physics mode. You can toggle physics mode by pressing the single quote key comma while in flight. The single quote key is usually next to enter on your keyboard. Toggling this will change several. For one, you will no longer fly in the direction in which your ship is pointed. If you apply power in one direction, that is the direct... Now, go give it a shot. Use X to select the nearest enemy, then use Tab to engage Turbo to get near him, and also try to toggle into physics mode when engaging in combat. 
physics mode can be a little disorienting, and it isn't easy to navigate densely packed asteroid fields when flying backwards or sideways. If you bounce off some rocks, or explode, don't worry about it. Training is what this place is all about. Also, when you press X to select the nearest enemy, take a look at the information on your selected target in the upper right hand corner. There's a graph of their health, the name, or in collector or dentec collector, and other data. Go give it a try, then come back to the mission interface and click continue when you're ready. Okay, Infernox, we hope that was helpful. It's up to you to choose whether physics or flight assist mode is right for you. A lot of pilots toggle between them for different... The point of the NFC is to prevent combat near stations. If anyone fires within it, they will receive a warning. If another ship is actually damaged within a NFC, the person who damaged it will temporarily become kill on site with the local law enforcement, and will be hunted down and destroyed. Moral. Do not attack other ships in a no-fire zone. You will see a clear indicator on your HUD, the letters NFC will appear in red directly beneath your crosshairs. When this appears, you are in a no-fire zone and should behave accordingly. If someone else attacks you in a no-fire zone, run away. Go dock with the station, preferably. Law enforcement has no way of telling who truly instigated a given scenario, so they tend to just destroy both people who are involved. It's better to run and duck, the station guards and other defenses will deal with the bad guy. Finally, a bit more fun stuff. There is a special training capital ship in the sector with you. You may have seen it, hanging above the second cluster of asteroids. This is a Constellation class heavy military transport, although it is sometimes equipped as a light cruiser. Anyway, this vessel contains a docking bay, like any station, and you may dock with it and control one of the turrets. The docking bay does not appear on your radar as an S, like with the space stations. But, the bay is... Once you see it, fly into it and press the activate key, enter slash return. This will dock you with the capital ship and you will find an interface very similar to the station. At this point you can select a turret, if you like, and control that turret, letting you fire the turret's weapon. Once you're finished in the turret, press the activate key to return back to the capship interface, and then use the regular launch button to launch into space. Then press continue whenever you're ready. Great, we hope this has been informative. Now, fly back to the station and dock. Once you're docked with the station, we'll complete the mission. This time, we've defined a visible objective for you to see, above this text in your mission log. Other missions will often have these sorts of objectives, and it's a convenient way to see what you need to do next. Okay, Infernox, let's get started. We're sending you out after Orin Collectors. You will see their name listed as soon as you have them selected. 
They are the type of bot most common in the near asteroid field. There is a second, further asteroid field that contains more difficult drones. Don't worry about these for now, just stay closer to the station in the nearby field. Once you are launched, remember to press the appropriate key or button to select the nearest enemy target. On a touchscreen mobile device, press target. With a gamepad, press D-pad left. Using a keyboard, use the X key. And on Gear VR or Daydream, you will single tap the touchpad to select the nearest enemy. When you have selected an enemy, then find that target on your radar circles, and go destroy it. Launch whenever you're ready. Remember, you're looking for Orun collectors, which are enemy training drones that will appear red on your radar. There may also be some green dots, these are other new pilots in training. As long as you use select nearest enemy, you will only select the nearest enemy, and will avoid selecting friendly pilots. Do this using the target button, keyboard X key, game controller D-pad left, or by tapping the touchpad on Gear VR or Daydream. Once you have selected a target, you can see more information about that target by looking in the upper right hand corner of the screen. VR displays will show the target information in the lower center of the cockpit. 1x Orun collector killed. Kill 3 more. 1x Orun collector killed. Kill 2 more. 1x Orun collector killed. Kill 1 more. All four Exorun Collector destroyed. Head back to the station and dock to complete the mission. Great work. It's been great working with you, Infernox. You're going to make a fine pilot and a valuable member of our nation. Today we're going to actually show you how to navigate. Our galaxy is made up of many solar systems, stars with orbiting planets. Each of these systems is divided into 256 sectors for navigational purposes. You have been training in one such sector, and you're going to now leave and go to another in the same system. Let's get started. Because this is your first time, we're going to do the navigation for you, and set a nav route into your ship's computer. This route will take you to one of the two adjacent capital stations. Once we set the nav route, a new blip will appear on your radar, and a new reticule on your heads-up display. This will be the jump waypoint. It is a object-free point from which you can engage your jump engines. It is not always the best, or closest such point, it's simply a workable one that your nav computer calculated. Turn your ship Okay, the nav route has been set, you can see the objective is now defined above. Fly to the jump waypoint, or fly until the bottom distance bar completely fills and says activate. At that point, press the activate key, enter or return, to engage your jump engines. You will need to have 25% power cell energy to jump, so you may need to disengage turbo briefly before jumping. Go now. We'll follow up with you when you reach Etang J11. You made it. Excellent. You've made your first jump. Now find the S icons on your radar and fly towards the station. Dock, and we'll complete the mission. Great job, Infernox. 
Now one last thing. You have come to a new station to train, and have left the old training sector behind. As a result, you need to set home here, so you will return to this station if your ship should explode. You will find the set home button on the lower right hand corner of the screen, near the launch button. Go press it now, then... Fantastic! Now, be sure you check out the other training missions available here. As soon as you pass a few more of them, you can take the basic flight status test, and many more types Welcome, pilot. Now we're going to go into a bit more detail about how the various station interfaces work. We won't actually be leaving the station at any point in this mission, so you just need to come back to this interface to continue on to the next explanation. As usual, you can hit them to open the mission subtab of the PDA interface from anywhere other than a text. Great, so let's get started. Now, we're assuming you completed the Training 3 mission, and perhaps you still have some cargo which you picked up from destroyed drones during the course previous mission. We'll start out with how you can examine those items and decide what to do with them. First, take a look at the Commerce tab. That's the leftmost of those three main tabs that are in the upper middle part of your screen. The default interface in the Commerce tab is Welcome. It should be the tab that's open if the welcome interface is the first thing you see when you dock with a station, unless you have an active mission. It is designed to give quick access to a lot of common tasks. The left-hand side shows information about the local station where you have docked, who they are, what they're about, informative blurb. Repairing your ship can vary in cost. Underneath the ship overview display and repair slash rearm buttons on the welcome panel you'll see information relating to the cargo on board your currently selected ship. Here you can see columns for the quantity of the item, Q, the current price you can get for the item at this station, sell price, the profit you would make from that transaction, profit, and the full name of There are three buttons at the bottom of the current cargo display. Unload and Sell will unload only the currently selected item in the cargo display, and sell it to the local station. Unload and Sell All will unload everything in your cargo and sell it. Unload will simply unload it from your ship into your local station cargo area. Everyone has personal storage space on the station, and this can be used to load slash unload items from your cargo. Underneath the Unload buttons, you'll see a field that can optionally show either item details or station inventory. If you wish to see details about an item you're carrying, click on the item in your cargo hold display, and additional information will appear under item details. If you would like to see what other items you have in your current station inventory, the unloaded personal inventory we just discussed, you can click to see that in the same area. Next we're going to move on to other interfaces, so finish up with the welcome menu and click on continue when you're ready. The next sub-tab down on the list under Welcome on the right-hand side of the screen, Load Slash Unload, is a more specific interface for the same loading and unloading functionality we just discussed on Welcome. Almost everything you can do on the Welcome panel can be done more specifically and in greater detail, elsewhere in the station interface. Welcome is simply intended to make the most common tasks available in a quickly accessible interface. Next we'll take a look at Commodities, also on the right-hand side sub-tab list under the Commerce tab. Commodities is where traders will go to purchase trade goods. Click on the Commerce tab, 
and then on the Commodities sub-tab on the right-hand side of the screen. This will open the Buy panel, showing what local trade goods are for sale, and their prices. You can click on the individual items to show more specific information on each item. Items with grey colored background bars cost more money than you currently have. You can always see how much money you have, shown next to credits, on the lower right hand side of the screen. Credits are the universal currency of the galaxy. If you wanted to purchase trade items from the commerce subtab, you would simply click on the item and then purchase selected. The max button will calculate how many of the item you can purchase, based on how much money you have and how much free storage space is available on your currently active sh Now let's move on to the ship tab. Click on the main ship tab between commerce and your PDA. It should default to displaying the select ship interface, unless you had been previously using a different interface. Regardless, take a look at manage sub tab in the select ship panel. This is where you will select different ships, if you own multiple ships on the current station. You can buy ships and equipment at any station where you're allowed to dock, but if you fly off and leave them behind, you cannot use them until you return to that station. Anything you leave behind is kept in storage. The tree control on the right hand side of the select ship panel shows all your ships at the local station, with the active ship listed at the top. Underneath each ship is shown an indented list of the equipment attached to that ship's ports. This does not include items in the cargo hold, only the equipment configured for you. The preset buttons underneath the tree control have a special purpose. If you click on a given ship configuration, say your current EC-89 with government plasma cannon and free power cell, and then click on set preset 1, it will define your ship configuration as preset 1. You can then use this to easily repurchase the same preset under the upgrade menu, or after your ship is destroyed. Whenever your ship is destroyed, you are automatically sent back to your home station, that is the one where you last set home, button in the lower right. Once you arrive back at your home station, you will be prompted with a small menu that will say buy back last ship, and also show a list of presets. At this point you have the option of either buying the last ship you were flying, or purchasing one of your defined preset configuration. Of course, you always have to have enough credits to be able to afford any ship you are buying back or purchasing from a preset. The only exception is your current EC-89 with free equipment, which is available across the galaxy for free, paid for by your government. Ships and equipment. Configure ship is used for more advanced configuration of your ship's ports and add-ons. When you buy a ship, as you did when you first started the game, any add-ons you purchase are automatically configured to available ports. However, you can also do this manually. This is necessary if you should find a new weapon floating in the scrap left from a destroyed enemy, and want to bring it back to the station and use it. The left side of the panel shows your currently active ship, with the ports illustrated as squares. The squares will be filled with the icon of an equipped item if the port is used, on your EC-89, all your ports should be used. If you wanted to unequip an active port, you could click on the if you click on equipment in the list on the right hand side of the panel, you will see that all ports other than those compatible with the add-on will turn red. Small port add-ons can only be equipped in small ports, large to large, power cells to power cell ports, and so on. Usable add-ons are listed in white. Add-ons which require license levels higher than what you currently have are displayed in red. Again, enforcement of license levels is specific to lawful areas of the universe. There are other locations, with their own added risks, that will permit you to equip any item. Underneath the list of The character display shows your progress in the galaxy, your relationships with the various factions, and any special accomplishments you may have been awarded during your travels. Statistics is the default display, which shows your license levels on the left-hand side of the panel. The graph represents how far you have progressed towards the next license level. The number shows your exact progress out of the total required, 5 one thousandths is 5 points out of the required 1000. You can also click on each license name to see it. On top of the panel you'll see the other displays that are organized under the character sub tab. If you click on faction standings, you'll see what kind of relationship you have with the various factions in the universe. Usually, you started out admired by your own nation, and perhaps by a few allies. To everyone else you will be neutral, not liked or disliked particularly. If your nation is at war with another nation, such as the Etani and Circo, 
you will find yourself hated by the enemy. You can click on each faction name to see more information about the faction. The last display in character is accomplishments. He Let's finish up and show you a little about chat. Chatting with other pilots is a pivotal way to learn, to group up to take on more difficult targets, or just to meet others. The chat interface takes up the top of the screen, in both the station and hut interfaces, and uses the You can also simply click on the text entry bar on the chat interface, while in the PDA or station, to type. Once there, you can write private messages to specific players by beginning your sentence with slash message player name. E. Slash message incarnate hello how are you? Would send a private message to the user incarnate. You can also that about wraps up the topics for this mission. We hope you weren't too bored. We needed to ground you in the basics of the station before we move on to more difficult missions. As a final note, you can hit F1 in any station. Welcome, pilot. The welcome interface. Repairing your